Last week in a reversal, the Canada Revenue Agency announced that people who hold bear trusts would not have to file a trust return for the 2023 tax year, just a few days before the April 2nd deadline. That may be a big relief to those who share bank accounts with elderly parents and are confused about what a bear trust arrangement is, but also potentially frustrating if you filed before the deadline. So what now? Nicole Ewing, Director of Tax and Estate Planning at TD Wealth, joins us now to discuss the person we call on to always explain these complicated matters. Nicole, let's just start with like what happened first off. Okay. Well, essentially, we had legislation that was in place that for many months. The community of tax professionals has been um, seeking to understand and has expressed some confusion around how they would expect the CRA to apply these new rules and which bear trusts would have a filing requirement. And after um, uh, a great deal of, of reflection and consideration on that, the CRA has announced that it would not require uh, individuals who have a bear trust filing requirement under the legislation to file. Now, essentially, that means that there was not sufficient clarity on what a bear trust is for the purpose of these rules, and that they have essentially told the, the public that they are not required to, um, to file according to the legislation that's currently on the book. So it's essentially an administrative concession. Hmm. Um, what if you had filed before this announcement? Well, this is tough, right? This begs the question of what will be done with that information and how it will be used and whether it could or should be used for other purposes, whether the position that you took on in, in filing the documentation, whether you will be held to that in the future if the interpretation or we have additional guidance, whether the information that you provided would continue to be the position that you would have taken. And if that information is now on the record, you know, what, what what are you to do about that as a taxpayer? How do you maybe correct that filing? And as well, we have a number of trust numbers that have been issued that will not have filings associated with them. And so part of the question is, if you have a, a trust number, a T number now that you don't need to use, how do you get rid of it? Because in the past, you would need to essentially file on your return that you would like to, um, that you are completed with the with the trust and that you no longer require that number. It doesn't appear that those sorts of um, considerations have yet been um, reflected upon. And so it's not really clear on what will happen going forward. Now we do expect that if you have spent money to comply with these rules, if you have incurred legal or accounting costs, those should be deductible against income. Now, not recoverable, but deductible. So you won't have tax payable on that. But there is sort of that broader question within the community of who should bear the who should bear the cost of the work in progress that was done? Because many, many accountants and law firms were right up until the last minute. Um, really trying to you know, put the work into understanding how to comply with these rules. And when they are no longer required to file, what happens to that work in progress? Can it be billed? Um, and, and where do those efforts go? So a few remaining questions on that. I kid you not, this was a conversation we had at my family's Easter dinner. So <laughs> it certainly is a lot of Canadians were asking about this. So maybe, you know, the, the idea of a bear trust has been a source of confusion uh, for, for many Canadians. Maybe let's lay out what a bear trust is or, or what we think it is. Well, that's, that's really the crux of the issue here is that we don't, we being the broader tax and legal and financial community, we really don't have clarity on what the CRA, and clearly the CRA didn't have clarity either, um, on what the what a bear trust would be for filing purposes. And maybe if I back up for just a second, when we talk about a bear trust, there is a clause in the legislation that defines for the purposes of that section, what is intended by the term bear trust. But more broadly, we have different pieces of legislation, so tax law, trust law, uses the term trust and perhaps bear trust differently, depending on what whether we're talking about for trust law purposes or for tax law purposes. And then here, even within the Income Tax Act, we have the term trust having different meaning depending on what section you're in. So the term bear trust was defined in this legislation only applying to this section, but it also referenced, it, it said a bear trust is a trust that. So 
if you first have to know what the definition of a trust is in order to know whether or not you have a bear trust, that begs the question a little bit as well. And more broadly, when we think about an, a, a trust, um, it essentially requires the three certainties. So there has to be certainty of intention to create the trust, certainty of object and certainty of subject. So essentially the who, what, and, and why. Um, and a lot of people just weren't you know, clear on whether or not they in fact even had a trust, let alone a bear trust. And one thing Kim, that was missing from this conversation over the last number of months is that this legislation was explicitly to apply to express trusts. Now, in trust law, there are different types of trusts. So express being one type, we also have resulting trusts and, and others. And so we do need to, I think, go back to the, uh, the drawing board a little bit to work through that analysis of what this legislation was intended to apply to, and then hopefully we'll have some additional clarity on what a bear trust is for the purposes of these filing requirements. Can I ask, I've only got a couple minutes, Nicole, but maybe what are some examples uh, that you believe that there is clarity that this is a bear trust and then others where, for filing purposes, and, and also those that, where there's not. So I had to put that asterisk right. in for filing Thank purposes. you, thank yes. you, please do, yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, so I think it's very clear that a, um, a bear trust corporation or a nominee corporation, for example, that is set up in order for to, to ease um, you know, developers transferring title to property. So a trustee of a bear trust corporation that was set up by a lawyer um, with appropriate documentation, that is a bear trust and would not have the filing obligation. Um, also, I think fairly clear would be if a child was added to title of their parents' home and in order to preserve the principal residence exemption, they had documentation completed by a lawyer again that just declared that this was a bear trust arrangement, that would be a bear trust and we wouldn't have a, an obligation to file. Clear in most cases, I would suggest, is joint accounts as between spouses. So generally speaking, in the absence of evidence to the contrary, that is not going to be a trust or a bear trust. Where we still have that really fuzzy question, though, is when we have adults who have is parents who have added their adult children onto title. And being on title in and of itself is not going to determine whether or not this is a trust or a bear trust. It does come down to that question of intent. So you may very well have some of those joint accounts still with the elderly parents that are in fact trusts. They may not be bear trusts, but they may actually be full-blown trusts and they would still have a filing requirement despite the administrative concession of the CRA. And that was just the last thing and I've got Nicole 30 seconds here, but. The, the CRA said that bear trusts do not need to do a filing, but they are still new trust reporting rules for everything else. Exactly, and those trusts, those rules were quite expansive. So there used to be a fairly narrow set of circumstances in which a trust would need to file, essentially if that had income or a, a capital gain or distributed capital property. That has expanded now so that express trusts need to file unless they fit into one of these exemptions. So we may have heard about those, the less than $50,000 in cash, um, the less than three months old and other, other um, examples. They would not need to file. But otherwise, those trust reporting rules are still expansive. We still need to be filing our T3s and the Schedule 15 that has that additional information about beneficiaries and trustees and all of that um, uh, information about the about the interest in parties that still needs to be provided to the CRA. Nicole Ewing, always a font of information. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure.